welcome back to the Hannon Book Nook. I'm Tamara Stein and today we are going to be talking about building vocabulary with one of my favorite children's books. It's called Giraffes Can't Dance and it is by Gilles Andre and Guy Parker Rees and I hope I'm saying that correctly. This is a great story. It is about a giraffe who is a bit uncoordinated, and I can very much relate to that. There's a jungle dance, all the animals are invited, and Gerald shows up and he gets made fun of for his dance moves. And he's quite sad about it, and then a cricket gives him some advice, which is that he can dance, he just needs to find his own beat. So it's a lovely story, and in terms of building vocabulary, on almost every page in this book, there are some rare or uncommon words that your child might not be too familiar hearing in everyday speech that you can introduce and help to build his vocabulary. So why focus on building your child's vocabulary? Well, the more words your child understands and uses, the easier it is going to be for him to read and write later on because he'll understand more words and that's going to promote his understanding of the overall story. Also, a larger vocabulary has been linked to greater academic success. Once your child has an understanding of the basic everyday words that you use all the time like wet or happy, you might want to consider stepping up the level of vocabulary you expose him to. So you can use more sophisticated or more specific words. So instead of wet, you might use the word damp or maybe soggy, depending on what it is. And instead of happy, maybe you would talk about someone who's joyful or exuberant. Books can be a wonderful source for finding some of these rare or uncommon words. And in a book, you have the context of the whole story and also the visuals of the pictures to help build an understanding of these new words. Giraffes Can't Dance is filled with some of these rare or sophisticated or uncommon words. For example, on page two, it says, he was very good at standing still and munching shoots off trees but when he tried to run around, he buckled at the knees. So you probably picked up on a couple of words there that the average preschooler isn't exposed to on a daily basis. A couple of the words that stood out to me were munching, which might be a more sophisticated or unusual way of talking about eating, and buckling, which is a little bit of a more sophisticated way of talking about bending at the knees. When you're thinking about which rare or uncommon words to introduce to your child, you want to think about words that are going to come up often, so throughout the day, in many different contexts, and words that really relate to your child's life. One of the words that I picked from Giraffes Can't Dance comes up at the end of the story. It's the word entranced, which is a more sophisticated way of saying focused. In the story, the text says, then, one by one, each animal who'd been there at the dance arrived while Gerald boogied on and watched him, quite entranced. So, entranced is the word we're going to focus on, and we're going to highlight it with a strategy called shoot for the stars. This is a Hannon strategy that stands for stress, show, tell, and relate, and say it again. First, we have to stress the word. So, to make entranced stick out from the rest of the words in the text, we want to say it a little bit louder and maybe a little bit slower than the other words in the text. We could also pause just slightly before we say it and then after we say it, so it's really clear. So, if I'm reading Giraffes Can't Dance, I might say, Arrived while Gerald boogied on and watched him quite entranced. Next, we want to show the word. One of the benefits of introducing new vocabulary in book reading is you have the illustration to really show what a word means. So in this case, I would point to the animals, especially that lion, who looks quite entranced with Gerald's dancing. If you're introducing a new word and you don't have the picture to support you, you could use your body language or facial expression or any other visual to help really show what a new word means. The next part of STARS is tell, and that means giving a short explanation or definition of a new word. So in this case, you might say, entranced means the animals are really focused on Gerald. 
You can also tell a new word by talking about what it is not. So you could say, the animals are not distracted, they're really focused on what Gerald's doing. The next step is to relate the new word to other words your child understands or to experiences your child has had. And this does a couple of things. So one, it makes the word really relevant to your child. And just like most of us, we pay more attention to information when it's personally relevant. The other thing is, he's making connections in his brain between this new information, the new vocabulary word, and previous information. So it's gonna be easier for him to understand. One of the ways you could relate this is by making a comment like, oh, the animals are really entranced. Just like you were entranced by your Legos last night and you didn't hear me when I was calling your name. Or you could give an example when you yourself were entranced to make the meaning of that word really clear to your child. The last step in shoot for the stars is say it again. And this means saying the word again the next time you read the story, but also taking that word out of the book and applying it to real life situations. So if your child is really focused on a puzzle, you might say, wow, you're really focused on that puzzle. You're entranced by it. And see if you get a response. When you do that, you're really solidifying your child's understanding of the word. So there you have it. That's how you shoot for the stars to help your child learn a new word. You'll know the strategy's working if you hear him use the word. Maybe you'll be on a walk and your child will see a cat and say, hey, that cat is entranced by the bird in that tree. Well, I hope you enjoyed this strategy for building vocabulary and that you try to shoot for the stars. If you do, let me know how it goes in the comments below. And if you have a great children's book that encourages vocabulary building, please share it. I'm always on the lookout for new books. Have a great day and happy vocabulary building. See you next time.